right, so thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, we are here to talk about the roadmap for MASS and 761 and the new releases. My name is Amy Tatum. I'm a Solutions Director and Technical uh, VP with Starboard Consulting. Uh, Starboard's been around for 15 years now. We're excited to be celebrating our anniversary this year. Hard to believe that it's been that long, yet at the same time, it seems like it's been a lot longer than that. It's one of those weird things. So uh, Starboard's a Maximo business partner with IBM. We do uh, implementations, integrations, uh, configurations, assessments, training, uh, you name it, if, if you can put Maximo into it, then it's something we can probably do. Uh, so we're excited to be here today and get back on the webinar uh, bandwagon. I guess we did a lot of these during 2020 and early 21. Uh, took a little bit of a break from them and are, are coming back to that. So happy to be back online with everybody and hope that we can provide you some good good information today and, and answer your questions as we can. So um, as Pam noted earlier, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll get to those as we go through the materials or at the end. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes of presentation and then 10 minutes of, of Q&A uh, that we're ready to go through. So um, with me today is Kim Woodbury. So Kim, you wanna take a minute and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, Kim Woodbury, Senior Product Manager. I guess they rebranded us again. I, I didn't even <laughs> notice my title here. Um, I, I know many of you, but have been um, with the Maximo family for many, many years and um, currently uh, helping to uh, with our go to market activities around the application suite, um, as well as trying to, um, you know, get our 761 um, solution through its remaining life uh, uh, for for all of that uh, for that bridge. And we're going to talk about that remaining life a little bit later. So, mm -hmm. um, so it was about a year ago, Kim, that you and I did this last time around and had a Maximo uh, Mass 8 overview. So that's gone by pretty quick. And I know some things have changed since then. So today we're going to focus on um, on the roadmap, the technology modernization analytics and the journey to predict. So let's just dive right into that content. And um, you want to start with maybe what's been some of the priority uh, for IBM as they've invested in uh, the mass application suite and uh, in Maximo 761. Where has that been uh, driving the focus? Yeah, and I think that these um, these kind of uh, encapsulate, you know, where those focus areas are, um, of course, with the technology. So one of the things is is really embracing this OpenShift containerization platform uh, and and the move to, uh, you know, multi cloud uh, initiatives that our customers might have. And, you know, it's a learning curve for internally for some of the IBMers as well in those longtime Maximo people as we as we learn how how we can um, better better um, utilize the operators and some of that technology to, to ease our customers' implementations, right? So it's all about IT cost savings and um, being able to easily deploy fixes and move workloads and and um, do that kind of balancing. And so, you know, that's really kind of an IT discussion. And I'm usually more on the, the front end of the value proposition, if you will. Um, you know, that is important. And I, I understand that it's even important for the end users to make sure their system is available and up, right? So at the very least. Okay. Um, but really around modernization is where I think it would be most impactful for some of the end user community, right? And driving some of the changes for our new mobile platform and new mobile applications, you know, a reimagined mobile experience um, and some of the new role based apps and the new design patterns that are being implemented across the suite and across IBM, right? There's some award winning designs um, that are now being made available through the different applications. Uh, and so mobile is a is a big driver and I think something that um, with that next uh, generation Maximo application platform that it's built on, um, you'll see in the roadmap that that's where a lot of our focus will be. 
Um, analytics um, and bringing to the forefront, um, it, it plays in with some of those role-based applications and being able to present insightful data, whether it's through some graphic, um, you know, KPI like like um, information or just some explorable data that's you know more presentable. There's also this move uh, towards the newer version of BERT. Um, so there'll be some reporting updates as well as we as we work with the Cognos team to bring Cognos back into the portfolio, um, which we're targeting for the end of this year. Now, not to um, diminish, um, but the, the journey to predict really is where the, the ultimate value comes from the application suite and having access to all these, you know, asset performance management um, applications, being able to do better condition-based maintenance and health scoring that leads to kind of a, a broader um, uh, value of long-term, you know, capital planning, budgeting, and asset replacement you know, um, managing your maintenance, uh, you know, getting rid of unnecessary maintenance by adjusting some of the, the way you do PMs based on, you know, condition as opposed to time, for example. So, you know, all those areas, right? And it's it's spread out a little bit and, and touches on different um, end users depending on where they all fit in your organization. Cool, that's, that's all great stuff. And I know we have a, a more technology focused um, webinar coming up in another month or so, I think, but I'm going to go ahead and, and go off script a little bit and ask a couple of questions that came in in the chat just because sure. they're related to what you were just talking about. Yeah. Um, so one of them is, uh, can mass only be installed in a Linux environment? Um, in, in Red Hat OpenShift containerization environment, yes. Okay. It's not Linux. It's not it, Linux. I didn't think right. so. Yeah. Um, and then the second question is, do we have infrastructure requirements for VM servers uh, with configurations based current setup and can that be shared with us? So I'm assuming that's out on the IBM website. Uh, yeah, somewhere. there are some sizing calculators um, mm -hmm. that I believe yeah. are publicly available. So we'll make sure we get those links out to out to people where you okay. can start doing some sizing and estimating based on what components of mass you're going to be using. So different pieces might need more computing power if you're doing some of like the visual inspection stuff with on the edge and those need, you know, have different requirements than just say manage and health. Uh, so we can share that. Okay. Yeah, I, I have seen those calculators and I, I think they're available publicly, but we'll, yeah, we'll double, double check and get those out to everybody. So, um, so we've got a lot of clients that are in the, the 761 uh, release stream. And uh, so let's talk about that one just yeah. a, a little bit. And um, so with that, um, I know there's an IFEX that just came out that addresses uh, quite a few things, some improvements, um, some fixes. There is one security uh, update included in that that I know has gotten a lot of attention with the Log4j uh, issue. And then as we look at items you know, two and three on this slide, uh, there's some important dates on there. And uh, of course that diamond at the end is a, a big one as well. So let's talk about this one a little bit. Yeah, so we just last week, the official end of support announcement for the 761 portfolio um, was released. And so we are in a, in the process of um, updating some of our lifecycle pages. And as you know, we kind of went off off IBM um, <laughs> rules when we when we use the third number, you know, we did end of support the 760 stream, which was effective last September and now the 761. So that adds a little bit of um, administrative overhead when you're starting to kind of look for some of these things. But the information's there. We can share links. There's a support page that has all the part numbers. Um, and we're gonna, we are gonna have to do a second batch in September. Um, there were a couple of items that were um, missed in some of the later revs, um, but but uh, essentially all of the portfolio will be uh, officially end of supported in September, September 30th of 2025. Um, we're also this month, you know, as as we move towards this being a really more in maintenance mode, there's an interim feature release in IFR. Um, and it's IFR one for most of the portfolio. I think that's IFR, 
two or three for transportation and nuclear, it might be two that they've already had some embedded uh, updates that needed to be published. But DB2, WebSphere, and Cognos will be um, a, newer versions will be available for those uh, in the last week of April. And all that will be rolled up into a 7613. So um, many APARs, so 7612 has been out for quite a while. Um, I think we've got, you know, 1,200 APARs or somewhere in that vicinity. Um, some other currency updates, um, you know, browsers and, uh, you know, Windows versions, things like that. Um, the Log4j update will be rolled in. All of those interim feature release updates will be rolled in, as well as um, support for BERT 4.8. Um, so as we look at the mass roadmap, you know, we'll see that BERT, um, we, we are eventually going to be trying to move away from BERT as it's no longer a sponsored open source project. Um, but we did want to at least get up onto this 4.8 version to be able to take advantage of some of the fixes that were available. Okay. So end of support, September 2025. Um, what happens if I'm not ready? to go to mass at that point in time. Right, so we we are following our, our life cycle of five plus three. So okay. if you look at the announcement, there would still be an opportunity to extend for an additional three years under an extended support contract. Um, that's through a, through a different um, team and, and would um, have a cost associated with it. Yeah, sure. Right. But we understand, yeah, people sometimes it takes longer than than uh, you thought. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it's three years away. So if you start planning now, that's enough time to to plan and move in that direction. But it is a big it's a big shift. I mean, go into the, the Red Hat and container um, infrastructure and, and all of that's a big change for a lot of people, both with the the infrastructure that they have in place as well as the skills that they have in place as far as maintaining those systems if you've got a, a team of people that are used to oracle and windows throwing yeah. them into a another platform like that is going to be a, a learning curve for sure yeah and there are some additional options now too right the managed service uh, offered mm -hmm. by ibm there's going to be uh, some new SaaS offerings that are coming um and as we learn more there's um the the, the processes around using that containerization platform are improving, you know, day to day, right? We've got sure. some Ansible playbooks that are helping to automate the installation. Um, as we get more mature in the, you know, use of the operators, um, some of this will become a lot easier. Well, that that's all great. And, and there's a lot of great resources online. I know with the IBM uh, communities and through the, the learning tools that are available. So definitely, some some great options there. So um, let's switch gears and talk about the mass roadmap. So here we have the the mass eight uh, with a few things here. So same some of the same focus. Some I see you know the technology uh, modernization, some uh, those types of things. But there's also some new things here. So let's let's talk through what's on this slide. Yeah, so first of all, I guess just to point out that, you know, originally we had been on a um, quarterly release for mass and mm -hmm. we backed that up now to three times a year. It was just we were spending so much time just in a re release cycle. Um, it was it was hurting how much, you know, actual function and improvements we could deliver uh, and our customers weren't able to adopt them that quickly. Um, right. Even three times a year, I feel like is right. is a lot. So. Um, as we look here, the 878889. Um, so this is this will be our um, cadence, at least at least our current um, view of, of the cadence going forward. Um, there will still be fixed pack. So again, there's a lot of interest in that log for J. So there was the fixed pack that that was released um, in March. Um, and also looking at in second quarter, at least our initial release of a SaaS offering. Uh, and uh, some support as we look at other hypervisors, um, you know, AWS and, um, you know, some of those are initially going to be bring your own license, but there's some other options there that um, maybe we could spend some separate time um, on that roadmap for people who are interested. But as far as the the manage portion, portion, so as we call the EAM portion of what's in mass, you'll see a lot around the mobile updates as well as some of these role-based applications. So inventory count books 
um, is one. We were, we've got, you know, we're well underway for um, a supervisor uh, view as well as some of the inventory, other inventory um, applications, uh, as well as scheduling. So there's like dispatching and, and different views for scheduler. And all of that also is is um, with the configuration, we talk about configuration updates, that's the, the configuration tool that supports the new Maximo mobile framework. Um, so being able to, as opposed to, as we had some of the, some challenges in the past, some gaps with, with uh, configuring anywhere and configuring the work centers, um, now this platform will will support those configurations, which should accelerate adoption and um, allow for our customers and partners to be able to release new capabilities, um, new mobile applications, you know, online, offline, and new experiences uh, more quickly. Um, let's see, I've got the BERT 4.8 in there, and I did mention, yeah. you know, on the analytics side, um, bringing in the Cognos 11.2. So that's something we're looking at. Um, you can see there, uh, you know, as far as the lifecycle policy, we, we're moving to this um, three plus two continuous delivery, really, um, that is the two, uh, will support two prior versions, but we'll also have a three-year support for what we deem a long-term supported, that's the LTS. So every couple of releases will identify one as being the long-term supported release and customers can move between those. So if it was 8.9 and then 8.12 and 8.17, there'd be an upgrade path to jump directly um, to those long-term supported releases and not have to consume and move so quickly um, to these, you know, three times a year. Okay, that makes yeah, that makes sense, and that that that'll be helpful to a lot of people. I know, um, you know, some of the clients that we work with that are in validated environments or they're in exactly. you know operations where upgrades are are tough. Uh, doing those three times a year is definitely a a challenge. So having that path to to skip a few, yeah, is, will be will be a welcome relief. So I'm gonna pop over to the questions here and see. Um, See what we've got. There's a couple around mass licensing, and I know we've done uh, some webinars even just about nothing but licensing and, and everything's moving to the app points and there's some options for conversions and calculators there. Yep. Um, is there anything you want to cover on that regard just briefly while we've got a couple minutes? Well, I think that as we talk about some of the benefits of the application suite in general, the, you know, the licensing for the EAM portfolio just had become so complex. Um, you know, we, we there's a 90 page <laughs> document to, to help yeah. simplify and describe how it all works. Um, so it does help now that we have the application points and essentially have have collapsed a lot of those individual licenses. So some areas like scheduling, for example, with just a base license and the app points, whether it's concurrent or named user, um, you have access to all of the EAM capabilities as well as scheduler and linear calibration. You know, those add-ons are no longer kind of individually um, licensed, which also simplifies some of your um, audit, you know, your compliance um, and relieves, relieves some of that um, anxiety about making sure that you're, you're in a compliant mode. I don't know if there were specific questions um, that I can answer there, but I, I think this app points is is really going to be quite good for for flexibility um, and being to app, able to access um, different things as well as try new things um, within your you know test environments. I think you know we should take a look at this visual inspections. Um, it could be interesting for our you know for this division of our organization and we have some app points that could support that. Mm -hmm. I, I do like that aspect of it. We've often had clients that, you know, wanted to do a, a pilot of HSE or scheduler right. or something like that. And and you, you had to go out and buy one license so that we could install it so they could play with it a little bit and determine if they wanted to go forward with it or not. So I think the flexibility of the app points and being able to just bring in those additional pieces as needed, try them out, pilot them, determine if you want to take it forward or not. Um, both for the, you know, what's been kind of the traditional Maximo products, but then especially when you start looking at the, you know, assist and monitor and, and visual inspection and those types of things, 
being able to pilot those without a huge investment is a is definitely a big gain for the outpoint model yep, as we go for sure. yep so um so i'm hearing a lot of concern and i've, I've heard it talking with our clients and I, i'm seeing it in some of the the chat window as well um you know for companies that don't feel like they're you're ready for the full mass infrastructure uh, is there a minimal upgrade path that can be gone gone through um are there still some components of what's in in what we know as Maximo EAM today that aren't fully mature yet in the the mass model that are coming in a little bit later uh, how do you give clients some sense of comfort and and confidence that when they do make that upgrade it's it's all going to be there and yeah. um you know is there a a dummy's guide for upgrading uh, to mass kind of a situation or a, a minimum viable product that folks should be investigating uh, maybe if they are concerned about that lift on the infrastructure side yeah i i would so i'm going to point to the upgrade playbook so okay. we should have yep. the link to that that we can share with everybody and that is a living document as well and as more of our services team and and our managed you know the the cds so the cloud delivery service team which think is also renamed now um, it goes through more and more of these they continue to add information there but I you know I'm sure there are components that aren't um, aren't needed for if you're just trying to do a like for like with manage for as far as some of what comes with the CP for D some of the Watson um, tools to do you know predict um, or assist some of the AI components that um, could reduce the footprint initially um, to to just get that the managed components up and running. So okay. I would point to the playbook to help okay. guide you for that kind of information. Yeah, absolutely. Because there okay. are a lot of, there are some prerequisites that are, you know, application specific. Okay, good to know. Um, let's talk a little bit more about Cognos and BERT um, and what that, that roadmap is looking like. So um, first off, you know, BERT's been around a long time and, and we've got a lot of folks with a lot of custom reports uh, that have been built in in prior versions. So uh, what's the upgrade path going to look like for them as we go to BERT? I think it was 4.8. Uh, yeah, I think going to 4.8 shouldn't um, cause any issue. I think that's going to be very straightforward. I think what we want to look at longer term is when we look to Cognos to be our primary yeah. reporting tool. So we know that there exists um, some conversion tools um, within IBM that we've looked at in the past. And so that's part of our planning here is to be able to provide at least some amount of uh, trans transition um, to be able to migrate the BERT reports um, to some semblance of use <laughs> for Cognos, right? <laughs> you know, it's sometimes 100% is hard to guarantee, but at least if you can get most of the way there and then just have some, some small um, tweaks to make that that will be very helpful. The other piece that we're looking at um, is the ad hoc reporting component of BERT is not something that Cognos provides in, in the same kind of way that we think is really important and useful for our customers. So we've got some POC work going on to build our own kind of ad hoc reporting engine. Right. Um, so that will be interesting as well um, to, to make that available. And hopefully, you know, we've talked about, I think for a decade about, you know, getting, you know, paperless and getting away from some of these these um, printed report requirements. And I know we're not there yet in a lot of industries and a lot of organizations, but some of the tools that Cognos provides and, and some of the ways that we hope to present information and share it in a more electronic way um, will help to ease some of those, you know, strictly like list report um, requirements. Um, the other thing with Cognos is we do want to make it available, not just for manage, but for some of the other applications Right. So if you want to run reports out of monitor or out of health. And so the way that we want to design that experience um, is is um, needs to be a little more open. Right. As far as far as today being very um, embedded in the frame in the classic Maximo sort of application mm -hmm. that the experience might be. It, it should be seamless, but I think it'll be a little bit outside of that fully embedded experience. Right. That we want to be able to. Um, present that information, show it in a portal, but also be able to access that and bring in information from different components within the suite, right? So thinking about it as a higher level reporting 
um, capability. How will the business analyst work center um, play into that at all if it does? Is that one of the areas that's being investigated or? Yeah, I think that as we look at the role based application, so as mm -hmm. as those um, come out and get developed and you can see some examples in the health applications that are there now that there's some embedded kind of KPIs and and reporting that is available and mapping. Um, that th those will continue to expand and be delivered in the role based apps and we'll look at the capabilities that were delivered, but eventually the the work centers just because of the age technology will be right. deprecated. Yeah, right. Okay. So sure. we do want to make sure that whatever we deliver for Maximo Mobile and the role based apps delivers the same level of features that were available in the anywhere applications and the work centers. OK, that makes sense. All right, so we've got a couple of questions asking for the links, which we will definitely get out um, and include for folks uh, along the lines of mobile. What version does mobile uh, do the mobile applications become included and no longer an add on? So they are include so mass they, they are included they in are the application mass, right? suite, yeah. right? So I'm not sure I'm understanding. So they are add on still for the 761. I think I mentioned earlier that with you would have to purchase some app points. So this is a good way to kind of get yourself into that um, licensing uh, mm -hmm. mode to be able to support um, these mobile applications running on 7612 or 7613 also get get you um, sort of early I'll say access to the framework so you can start to learn those configuration tools and and how that all works um, but they are just available anywhere and mobile are both part of the licensing of the application suite okay so if, if we go ahead and go to the application suite and, and one of the eight versions then mobile's included um, right. and we've got a couple clients that have talked to us about converting their anywhere licenses to app points in order to have access to uh, the newer maximum mobile but on their 761 platform so at that point it is a licensing it's yep. an app point licensing um, conversion uh, that does become available but with yeah, that. and I think that hybrid model, I don't know, for a lot of customers, I feel like that it's not a bad way to yeah. kind of put your toe in the water, right? Yeah, and exactly. you get the mobile piece, but you also now have app point. So through Passport, you can download the application suite and maybe you just want to look at monitor and you don't have to, you know, use manage right away. Maybe you just use, use your EAM 7612 as you plan, but it allows you to start um, learning the technology and um, learning how the licensing works and the license server and you know all of those things are educational. Sure, and we stand up a dev environment and and poke yeah. around a little bit with a demo database even and see see how things work out. So exactly, yeah, those are all great great transition tools there. So um, I have one question that had come in earlier. Um, well, one of them here. Uh, with Maximo licenses, uh, IBM informed us that we can no longer purchase licenses directly from IBM. Is that true? Mm, and no. why? I hadn't yeah. heard that. I mean, as a business partner, we'd love for you to purchase licenses through us, but um, you can certainly still work with IBM on on that. Right. The um the one thing I guess it just I I don't know if this was an FCTPA that they're only available uh, through Passport possible. Advantage. So if there's something in your contracting that you're trying to still use FCT, there is a migration to Passport that's required. Um, and, and actually there's there's some movement now that the FCT program is going to be discontinued at the end of this year. So all FCT licenses are going to have to be migrated and there are some some changes, some new new options for programs that um, that support similar terms to what was what was offered with FCT, but that system is being um, shut down at the end of this year. So, okay. uh, yeah, it could have been some confusion around the FCT then that was right. was driving that question. So. All right. Well, it is one twenty. Well, it's one thirty now, so we are at our uh, a time limit. But um, again, I want to just thank you, Ken, for all of the great information and in, in your time today. And sure. uh, again, we'll get the recording out. We'll get answers to the questions out. Um, as you can see here, we've got another uh, more technical webinar uh, coming up next month in late May. 
so please feel free to, to register and join us for that one for some more great information. And for anybody that is going to the, the Maximum Utility Working Group meeting next week in, in Austin, uh, please come by the Starboard booth, look us up. We'd be happy to talk to you there and answer any additional questions that you might have. So thanks everyone for your time today and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Kim and Amy. Bye.